So next I'll talk to you about energy efficiency. First, why we should do energy efficiency, then what it is, uh, what it is in production and in consumption, and then in the end, what is the effect of energy efficiency. So first, why efficient energy use is important. Uh, as you already might know, global energy consumption is increasing. Um, and in all countries, it might not be increasing in, in Europe, in, in Western countries, uh, and it's decreasing, but global level, it's increasing. And mainly, the use of fossil fuels dominates. That means that also global carbon dioxide emissions are increasing. And in this picture, you can see the share of different countries, and you see that in OECD countries, the consumption is leveling off. But for example, in China, in Asia, the carbon dioxide emissions are really increasing. Uh, so this brings us to energy efficiency. With energy efficiency, we can uh, decrease the energy consumption, and there's a lot of benefits it has. There are economic benefits, of course, then also social, environmental, and energy security. Less we consume energy, more secure it is. And then one really important is climate change mitigation. And there are also other benefits. This is just a few most important ones to mention. And if we go closer to energy efficiency, it's the most important when we decrease carbon emissions. This picture shows you EAA's scenarios. The red one is current policy scenario, where the carbon dioxide emissions rise quite a lot. And then they show what are the most important measures to decrease the emissions. So here you can see carbon capture and storage. The significance is only one or two percent. Then we talk a lot about different energy sources, nuclear, biofuels, renewables, and also they are not that significant if we compare to energy efficiency. Uh, end use efficiency plays a role of 42% according to EAA, and it's double compared to renewables. So energy efficiency are really playing a key role when we think about climate change and carbon emissions decrease. Uh, then a little bit what the energy efficiency really is and what it means. Um, basically, it means more with less. So we can have more services, we can have more heating or more electricity or more light at the house with less primer energy. So in energy production, it basically can mean more efficient energy generation and also reducing and utilizing energy losses. In a consumption side, for example, insulating a home so you don't need to heat that much, that's one option, or reducing LED lights, which consume less energy than traditional ones. Uh, then energy saving is also a way to decrease energy consumption. But I see it as a little bit different than energy efficiency. Of course, you save energy when you switch off appliances that are not needed. It's smart, but it's not exactly efficiency. OK, so then we go to, go to efficient energy production. Mm. In energy production and transmission, we can we can improve the efficiency with different ways. We can improve production processes, which can basically mean that we modify the turbines so that they produce more energy from the same amount of fuel. And do also a little more different technical changes to the processes. Then we can use more efficient production processes, for example, combined heating and power production. I'll come to that a little bit later. 
then we can utilize so-called waste heat and then uh, think efficiency in transmission so check that our power lines and heating and cooling transmission networks are efficient and we are not losing energy in that. Uh, so combined heat and power production basically means that when we do energy by burning something, we can burn coal, natural gas, biomass, we use turbines to make electricity. But when we burn something in order to make or produce electricity, there's always heat in the process. And then we can use the heat to heat up the ho heat up houses and other buildings. So using this combined heat and power production method, we can utilize up to 90% of the energy we are using in the pr process. So if we get 10 units of natural gas, nine, 9 of it we can transmit, transmit to be electricity or heat. Another option, which is more popular, especially in not that Nordic countries, is condensing power plant where we produce electricity, but then we don't use the heat. We have to condense it if the power plant is nearby water, they condense it to the sea or to the river. And if it's not nearby water, they use those huge, huge silos, this shaped to condense the extra heat to air. And then they lose, well, depending on the technique and how modern the power plant is, up to 60, even 70% of the energy they are using. So the efficiency rate is around 40 only. So this combined heat and power production has a major potential when increasing the efficiency of energy production. Of course, in some countries you don't need heat that much, but if there's a need for heating, then it's more efficient to use CHP production. Uh, then we can also utilize so-called waste heat as an energy source. Uh, we see that building stock can be one energy source. So that means that when you go to shower, you use normally warm water. The water goes to a purifying station, but after the water is purified, it's still quite warm, and after that it continues to the river or sea. And before that, we can utilize the extra heat out from the water and use it again to warm houses. Also, if we need to cool buildings, uh, the cooling need comes uh, mainly from the sun, but also people and appliances inside warm the warmed house. Uh, the surplus heat, we can use district cooling to cool the building and then utilize the heat we collected from the building to heat other buildings. So if we have a glass building which during the summertime, during sunny days, warms up quite much, we can take that heat and warm, for example, water in that same house or warm different houses in the city. Also, we can utilize so-called waste heat from industrial processes to warm up buildings. Uh, this one example, a little bit about the same phenomena. So in, in left hand picture, you see there's um, a lot of computers in a basement. They could be also under the ground, like in a right hand picture. And they are using quite a lot of energy, electricity especially, and they are producing a lot of heat. Well, you have to get rid of the heat and in building specific cooling system you have the condensers well you can have them roof and in a in a cold day you can still blow out air which is 50 60 centigrade warm in district cooling solutions you have the same same data center 
uh, it could be located in a similar similar building and then it again uses quite a lot of electricity but we use cold water to cool it down and we bring warm water away from the data center and that warm water we can utilize to heat the home and warm water so there's not that much waste heat put outside anymore and we can utilize the extra heat. Okay, so that was about the production side and then uh, energy efficiency in consumption. There are different levels we can consider the energy efficiency. Uh, of course on the city level, then what happens to your home, at your home. Uh, then of course transport is one important thing. We are not talking it that much during this lecture, but it, it transport uses quite a lot of energy and we can use it in a more efficient way and we can decrease the transport need. And then there's also indirect energy use, uh, the food you eat, the things you buy, they also use energy at some point of their life cycle. And of course, if you waste a lot of food, at the same time you waste energy it has used during its life, whole life cycle. So that's also one point you can consider when thinking energy efficiency. Um, urban planning, if we are living in a city, that's a key thing to enable energy efficiency. What kind of in infrastructure there is, uh, how the energy production is implemented, what kind of transport opportunities and needs there are, are everything on the same same area so you don't have to travel that much, or are the living areas far away from office areas so the transport need is quite high. Then, uh, and how you combine free time to that, is there a lot of public transport which is more energy efficient compared to driving your own car. So the city planning it can create a lot of possibilities and it should take care of the needs needs we have. For example, in this picture, you can see some houses are there just on their own. So they are during the cold winter, they are maybe more, they need more heating than this, this block in here, which is more closed. So it doesn't, it doesn't cool down that much. But of course, it's different when, when you don't need to heat houses that much. Uh, then, when we think energy consumption at home, and on an individual level, what you can do, uh, the first thing is to realize how the energy consumption, how much you are consuming energy and for what you are consuming the energy. Uh, on a global scale, we are using a lot of energy to heating and cooling. And then it just, in north you are heating and in south you are cooling, but anyway both of them use quite a lot of energy. In Finland we use about half of the energy in a home to heating, then one-fifth to warm water and about one-third to electricity. And normally when we talk about energy efficiency and especially energy saving, we talk mainly about electricity. But you have to remember that it's just a small share of the whole part. Of course, you can heat your home with electricity, but still the appliances at home, they, they are the playing small part. And what comes to electricity? Here you can see that cooling takes quite a lot of energy. So fridge and freezer, they are in a one, and this this picture is about one person living in a small small apartment. So fridge and freezer, it's quite big share. Then different kind of appliances, computer, TV, stereo, so on. Then cooking, lights, laundry, and other small appliances. So what you can do to decrease energy consumption at home? Uh, of course, the first thing is building design, how it's planned, architect 
architecture. So how much light there's coming in, how, how often you have to use lights. And then, of course, how much sun warms the house. Because you can change quite a lot how much you have to cool cool the house with different architecture or and also heat. Then appliances, how efficient they are. And there's a lot of regulation in EU considering the appliances. So when you go to a store, you can buy only quite energy efficient appliances. You have still a selection to, to choose more efficient or less efficient. But what it was 10 or 20 years ago, they are all a more, lot more efficient than back then. And then there's the energy user's role. So how much space you have per, per people if you are living one person 20 square meters compared to one person 100 square meters. It's really different thing when it comes to energy consumption. Then right temperature is crucial. Um, there are different evaluations, but it's around 5% difference to energy use to change the temperature with one degree. So don't cool too much, don't heat too much. And then of course appliance use, energy saving role that switch off when you're not needing them. Uh, this picture shows about a little bit how the regulation has affected. So in 1990, there were less appliances than there are now, but the electricity consumption, the green, green one, hasn't increased that much. For example, we have more than double amount of fr fridges nowadays, but still the energy consumption has increased maybe only 50%. And this is all made because the new appliances are more energy efficient. Uh, then, finally, about a little bit about the effect of energy efficiency. Mm, a lot is already done. This picture shows the avoided total fuel consumption in EAR countries. Um, so, from 1990, this much energy is saved due to energy efficiency. So after years, it all has an effect. Uh, and this is example, like as I told in the beginning, that energy global energy consumption is increasing. But this picture shows that it's not true in every country. For example, in Australia, the GDP has been growing but still the energy consumption is decreasing. This also shows that the evaluations about the electricity demand hasn't been that correct, but it has been decreasing quite a lot. And this is the energy efficiency plays really, really big role in this one. And what that means, that also when we decrease energy consumption, we decrease also emissions which is really important when we think about the changing climate. Okay, so to summarize, uh, even though local scale situation might be different, the global energy consumption is increasing and energy efficiency enables different kind of benefits to meet the consumption needs and also decrease emissions. The world population is growing, we need more energy especially in growing countries, so the more efficient, efficiently we can use the energy and produce it, more we have it to the consumption needs. There is a lot of suitable technology to increase the energy efficiency, but still there is room for improvement and innovation, so we can increase or have new technologies, but also we should find new ways to use the existing technologies already. And that, that means that multiple actors in diverse sectors are needed. So we need business to make the innovation, but we also need government to regulate and help people to use, use the efficient solutions. And of, of course, individuals have, 
have a role in energy efficiency as well. And one thing is that there is no silver bullet, so there is a lot of small things and bigger things to do, but there's no one thing we could do which could solve the energy efficiency thing. So it's all about small, small and big actions on different levels. Thank you.